Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Idea Statica Connection webinar, focus on anchoring tips for anchoring design and code check. At the start, I have to point out the control panel of the GoTo application. You can type in questions anytime you wish during the webinar. Please don't hesitate to place a question. Let me introduce my colleague, David Kuchera. My name is Vid Hurcik. We are both product engineers in Idea Statica company, and we are dealing with connection application. David and I will take care of your entertainment for next hour. At the beginning of the webinar, just a simple overview of the method behind the scenes. Idea Statica connection offers a real base plate behavior. Base plate deformation will cause braying, which will cause the increment of tension force in the anchor. Also, nonlinear contact um, is created between the base plate and concrete foundation block. Uh, this contact acts only in a compression. Concrete foundation block is created uh, based on the winkler pasternak model. The anchor is modeled as a spring uh, with a working diagram. So let's jump right into the examples. David, David, it's your turn now. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Vita. We can go on. In the first example, uh, we show you a practical demonstration for column anchored to base plate. During the modeling, you will see these highlights. New wizard, it uh, helps you speed up the process of modeling and some theory. Theory will be about concrete con failure. At this time, let's switch to our software. Let's launch Idea Statica and application connection. New window with intuitive wizard appears and this wizard guides you and helps you to speed up your process of modeling. In the first step, we select class, then topology and design. If we want, we can change steel grade and we will do it. We can use steel uh, 355, yes, that's okay. And if we want, we can change bolt assembly, concrete grade, or code for check. We support Euro code, American code, and uh, Canadian code. And uh, we can confirm. We create our project. Our connection has already final design and we can immediately calculate it. So let's do it. In the background, non-linear analysis are running and the process of iterations. And immediately we can see the results, the summary of the results and uh, we can investigate in the tab check uh, equivalent stress plastic strain we can display mesh or deformed structure if we want we can go on and uh, switch to report 
the report is uh, generating and uh, we have possibility to export it to Microsoft uh, file or to PDF file. But for our purpose, we won't redefine our connection a little bit. So let's start. We go back to design. And uh, first of all, we change course section of member one. Let's uh, right, let's have a right mouse click and change the cross section. We choose tube with diameter 600 and thickness. 15 millimeter and confirm. And now we can input a new load effects. We can speed up the process and we can use uh, XRS import function. So I will do it. I prepared my load effects in Excel sheet. I just copy it and paste them back into Idea Statica and confirm. Now we can go on. We have only one operation, it's a base plate. So let's modify and uh, redefine a little bit this operation. Let's change uh, base plate, then some offsets. Let's increase uh, or let's change type of anchor. We want to use uh, bolt assembly 8.8 .8 and the size M36. Yes, that's it and we can change other parameters. We decrease number of anchors and change welds a little bit. Yes, that's it. And we can change uh, concrete grade. I want this one. Okay, confirm and let's change some properties for uh, foundation block and change uh, shear force transfer to anchors and uh, that's it now we can calculate our connection again again uh, non-linear analysis uh, was running in the background and immediately we can see the results. Let's go to check to the tab on course and you can notice that uh, we have four on course A1 to A4 but only uh, three of them are loaded by tension. You can see it here and one or the last anchor is loaded by pressure. The worst uh, check is for this uh, item and we can unroll the check and investigate uh, what's happening there. We can see that the worst check uh, is for concrete code failure. Let's take a closer look at this check. I switch back uh, to our presentation. So here is a theory about concrete code failure. It's one of the checks and uh, it's performed in accordance with ATTAC, ATTAC 001, Annex C. 
you can see the formula for uh, the characteristic resistance of an anchor and this formula is composed uh, from some coefficients or factors it's the last part of this formula the first part it's uh, called it's this one it's called characteristic resistance of an anchor but we are interested in the middle part in these two areas the first one actual area of concrete cone and the second one area of concrete of an individual anchor and of course you can obtain uh, the results for this area in idea statica connection you can see it on the picture below so <coughs> sorry how idea statica determines these areas the first area area of concrete of an individual anchor it's independent uh, it's dependent i'm sorry it's dependent uh, on the effective depth and it's obvious uh, from the formula which you can see and the image next to this formula shows the area of concrete cone it was quite simple and then we have the second area actual area of concrete cone uh, determination of this area is a little bit complicated and uh, therefore we created our example with three anchors loaded by tension and one by pressure it helps to understand what's happening in the first step uh, the area for each drone anchor is determined at this time we are talking about areas a1 to a3 a3 it's uh, you can see it on the figure on the left and the last anchor is in pressure it isn't taken into account subsequently the union of these areas is created and we have one unified area on the right figure displayed with uh, with a red line it's this one and if we divide it this area by number of tangent anchors you will receive uh, actual area of concrete cone so we can go back to idea for our example and of course uh, you have option and you can find uh, these areas in our software. Okay, I can show you where it's here when you switch on the button uh, stress in concrete. And uh, here is our area. We can export it to the XF file. I can show you. Uh, I have to save it on my desktop uh, let's label it area let's save it and now we can uh, we can open it where it is yes it's here so let's open it and uh, zoom it a little bit yes that's it so you have this uh, possibility and uh, you can work with this drawing you can add uh, dimensions or whatever you want so we can close it 
let's go back to our presentation. And please keep in mind that edge distance uh, from concrete block affects the result for concrete uh, con failure. There are some formulas which can change for special cases and it's in accordance with attack and idea statica takes it into account. Uh, let me show you comparison. On the left picture, it's our original joint uh, which has been modeled before and uh, the check is under a limit of 100%. But, uh, however, we change edge distance. The check for one anchor isn't satisfactory. And uh, it's obvious from the picture uh, on the right side. So please it, please keep it uh, in your mind. Okay, it was uh, an example for concrete con failure. And we can move forward. The next topic is about uh, anchors with standoff which is possible to design, calculate and of course check in Idea Statica. And uh, this topic will explain for you my colleague Vitya. So Vitya, please, uh, you can continue. Thank you very much, David. Let's talk about anchors uh, with standoff. We have three possibilities. Uh, direct anchors, mortar joint, and standoff anchors. Let's look behind the curtain for standoff anchors. A small bar element is inserted between the base plate and the concrete foundation block. And it's loaded with the shear force, bending moment, and compressive and or tensile force. The bar element resistance is cal calculated according to the code procedures. We And we all know them well. Typical bending resistance cal is calculated with the section modulus and the L strength. For relevant procedures, uh, sorry, the relevant procedures are used for the American and Canadian code too. Uh, you can explore uh, the formulas and the values uh, by the daily, uh, by the, in the detail, uh, in the uh, results. I will proceed with another example, and I don't want you to, I don't want to bore you with too much uh, theory. Let's so let's start with a practical demonstration this time. I want to point out uh, that we will use a stiffening member. Uh, we will input or define general anchor and we will define different offsets to the edges of concrete foundation block. Right, let's jump into the application. And we will start with a blank template. Great. Let's begin. I will add a new member uh, with my desired uh, cross section. And I want this one. Let me just adjust uh, properties. Hmm. It could be like this. And now we will define the manufacturing operation. Let's start with the stiffening member. Great. And I will 
change it I will change the direction and the length great I'm satisfied let's connect these two members we've got manufacturing operation I will use cutting method miter cut and in a transparent model view I can see uh, the yellow line which represents the weld let's proceed with another manufacturing operation stiffening plate it will be my base plate great and just move it a little bit and rotate it to the right position I want to make a uh, rounding edges so let's do it in the editor and we will create 30 millimeter radius on all corners great I'm satisfied let's confirm and we can proceed another operation we want to connect uh, the, the base plate and the stiffening member and again we will use manufacturing operation cut now we are finished and the last thing is to define the anchors so let's do it we will use we will use bolt grid or contact manufacturing operation and we will choose our desired uh, anchor let's define anchors and I will only adjust the offset of uh, uh, edges to the base plate and if you will input one uh, value you will have uh, offset to the, uh, all sides uh, in the same uh, distance but I don't want it I have to input four values and this allows me to create a non-symmetrical concrete foundation block great the last thing is to determine the right position of the um, anchors so let's do it in the editor we will have three of them and I will just only change the coordinates for them great I'm satisfied let's confirm we designed our connection and let's load it and bending moment great we loaded our connection now we can create an analysis, analysis so let's do it all checks are green all is uh, satisfactory let's explore the uh, check uh, for us it will be interesting to see check of anchors and for example we can see equivalent stress and bolt forces and we can see uh, the area of concrete cone breakout failure which is here uh, David already told you th something about it and we will talk further about the concrete block in compression check also we can uh, generate a report if we want to and export it to the PDF or Microsoft document let's jump back into the presentation let's talk about the check of contact stress in concrete uh, we have a lot of questions about the effective area 
this value is crucial for the cold check and how it's calculated. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, the connection is loaded and deformed. Some parts of the base plate are pressed to the concrete foundation block. The contact stress area is determined. In the next step, the additional bearing offset of the cross-section shape is added and the area is determined. The intersection of areas is determined. This is the effective area. Now, the average stress on the effective area can be determined easily. We can uh, use only uh, mathematic procedures. In the last step, the average stress value has to be checked with the stress resistance value. The whole procedure is described deeply in the theoretical background. And one remark, a theoretical background can be found in the resources at our homepage. David, you can continue with another example. Uh, thank you, Vitya. Okay. In the third example, we will go through heavy anchoring. And you will see these highlights. General anchor input, how to work with uh, stiffening plate and stiffening member and comparison between shear force transfer. Either we use shear lock or friction possibility. But uh, before we start, in general, I can explain you three options which you can select for shear force transfer. The first one is uh, friction. It means shear force is transferred by friction between base plate and concrete only. The second option is shear lock. Shear force is transferred by shear lock. It's uh, obvious, but uh, here is important to mention that shear lock is from version nine modeled with finite element method as well as welds between shear lock and base plate. And uh, the third option, we can transfer shear force with only, only with uh, anchors. So it's uh, again obvious. Now let's switch to idea statica and we will go through our example. Our example has been modeled before and uh, the load effects have been already added. We will switch on operations and uh, have some explanation for uh, some interesting operations. Model contains uh, member, only one member, member M1. And the first operation we switch on is stiffening plate. It means our base plate. So it's this one. Then we connect uh, these two items, member one with plate, with base plate. And to do that, we use operation cut. You can notice that uh, one weld, or not only one, all the welds were added. And uh, we connected these two items. To make connection stiffer, we insert stiffening member one 
made of channel section and we connect it by two welds with member M1. For better view, I switch to transparent mode and I zoom in uh, our mode a little bit. And now I can switch the weld one. You can see a yellow line and uh, the same weld, the second weld. I can switch back to uh, solid view and it's really there. We modeled our welds. And now we can do the same on the opposite side. So let's switch stiffening member two and welds, weld three and weld four. In the next step, we can create stiffening member three. I can switch it on and uh, stiffening member four. And now let's add the first anchor. We can switch it on and something happened. I can switch uh, and show you some options for this operation. Here is important uh, to set items can't. And I can show you what does it mean. In our example, we have uh, four plates. Web, two flanges and uh, base plate. So it's uh, our input for item ca items count for plates. And uh, in the last possibility, foundation block, it's important to choose which plate will be your base plate. In our connection, it's this one and therefore we selected it. So we can return it to home view and uh, the same way I can switch on the last or the next uh, three anchors. Yes, that's it. And finally, we can add some stiffeners for our uh, channel sections. For a better view, I again switch to transparent mode and uh, we can switch on the first stiffeners and the second stiffeners. And uh, that's it. Our connection has final design and uh, we can go on and run analysis. Non-linear analysis started and the process of iteration is finished. In a, the summary of the checks, we can notice that one of the checks isn't satisfactory. It's a check for shear. So what to do? Uh, there are many possibilities what you can do, but I won't show you option with shear lock because in this example, we used uh, for shear force transfer friction. I have the same connection. We can switch for it. And uh, only one difference is that here is shear lock. I can rotate it for you and you can see this shear lock. We can calculate or I can show you how to input this shear lock. Firstly, when we go to the operation for anchors here in the line for shear force. It's our original example with friction and we edit shear lock. Of course, you can use uh, cross, any cross section you want and you can 
you can set properties, you can uh, modify dimensions, wells, and so on. So let's calculate this connection, the same connection with uh, shear lock. And you can see that uh, check for shear is much better and it helps. We can compare it in our PowerPoint. So on the left picture, it's our original connection. And on the right picture, uh, it's our modified connection with Shilak. So now you can compare it and you can see that it helps a lot. And uh, I won't show you that Shilak is really composed uh, by finite element methods. So we switch in idea to check and I can display for you stress and uh, mesh for this connection. I can rotate it a little bit and uh, now you can see that uh, from version 9 it was really implemented and uh, Shilak is modeled uh, by finite element uh, method as well as the other members. So oh, it was our example about uh, heavy anchoring. And now uh, we have the last example. It's this one. In this example, we will show you rod anchored to concrete column and uh, you will see these highlights, general anchor input, uh, stiffening plate, how to work with it. Then here is a special member called steel rod. Then you will see work with connecting plate and uh, we will use shear, for, shear force transfer switched to possibility for anchors. But uh, before we start modeling, uh, let me explain for you this uh, special member, which is called steel rod. This member has been implemented uh, since version eight, and you can use it in operations, gusset plate or connecting plate. And please uh, keep in mind that this member isn't checked. In IDEA Statica, you have to check it in your 3D global model. So now we can switch to IDEA Statica and start composing, start to compose our connection. I can make a new project. I can delete the previous. Uh, this time we will not use intuitive wizard, but uh, we will start for scra from scratch. And I can change, uh, let's say we can change, change steel grade for steel 235 and we can confirm. We have empty model, so let's add a new member and set its cross section. Its cross, cross section. Oh, let's do it. And for this time we will use steel rod. We want diameter 20 and uh, yes, that's okay. We can confirm. Then we we can input uh, load effects. Now we have only, so I can add new load uh, case. Now we have only 
tangent force. As I said, it's a rod. So let's uh, use a value of 15 kilonewton. And that's it. Now we can start compose our connection. Or I, I'm sorry, uh, I won't uh, place it uh, to the area in a better way, this member. So we can uh, so we can change pitch for this member and uh, some offsets. Yes, that's it. And because we have only uh, tangent force, I will switch modal type for uh, only tangent force. Yes, that's it. And now we can proceed with operation. I will create stiffening member, uh, stiffening plate, I'm sorry. So let's do it. Uh, to do that, we will use this operation. And we set some properties for this uh, stiffening plate. So let's do it. And we can rotate it a little bit. Yes, that's it. Then to speed up uh, our process of modeling, we can very easy copy this item. And uh, we have uh, another stiffening plate. And again, we uh, redefine some properties and uh, we rotate it in another uh, direction. Yes, that's it. And now I want to connect these two plates. To do that, I will use operation plate cut. It's this one. And I want to cut uh, plate two plates and cut by plate SP and I want to use uh, double fillet welds. And let's uh, define some thickness of the welds. We can use five millimeter thick welds. Now we can input uh, anchors. So let's add new operation, bolt grid or contact. And uh, we want to use anchors of uh, bolt grade 10.9, uh, 10 I'm sorry, and the size of 20. And confirm. Now we won't connect only one item. It's a plate displayed. And uh, Sorry, I have to switch for anchors because now we will model anchors. And uh, I want to connect this anchors to this plate. So I can set this plate and we can continue. I can change uh, some properties for fasteners. And uh, I will set position for anchors. I can switch for you for this view. And we can set the vertical position as well. Yes, that's it. So we can go back to home view. And uh, we can change some offsets different for each uh, edge and depth. And finally, we change shear force transfer to anchors. So that's it. And now we can connect uh, our member to the plate for uh, this process, we will use operation connecting plate. And 
we won't connect mem this member to existing plate. It's this one. We set some connection properties and the type for connection some dimensions we can change or we can uh, use double fillet welds and we change uh, size of the bolts let's use bolts m16 and we repair redefine position for bolt okay uh, here should be 100, not 10, it's, it's okay. So our connection has almost uh, final design, but I won't use, uh, I won't round it some corners for each plate. So let's do it in plate editor. For the first plate, we can use value 30 for all of the corners. For the second plate, let's go again to uh, plate editor. Let's add rounding. Again, we will use value 30 millimeter and only four corners, for two corners, one and two. Let's confirm. And the last plate, And uh, again, we will use rounding. Now, value 25 millimeter and for corner one and for corner two, and we can confirm. So, uh, we have final design of our joint, of our connection, and we can calculate it. And in few seconds, we will obtain a summary of results. And again, you can go to the check. Uh, you can immediately uh, uh, create a report and work with it. So it was our last uh, example. And now you can continue, Vitya. Thank you very much, David, for your examples. And uh, uh, we are almost at the finish of our webinar. Now it's time for your questions. And I think we already answered a lot of them during the webinar. Uh, thank you very much for uh, placing your questions here at the, uh, at the webinar. I have one, I can read one question from a user. Uh, can we use some external reference to define shape of the base plate? Maybe David can answer that. Okay, I can cover uh, this question. So let me uh, share my screen, okay. So I can show it in our last example. It was a steel rod anchored to concrete. And I have some DXF file plate, so I can uh, read it in Idea Statica and I can show you how. We can do it for uh, so let's say this plate, the second plate. So we go to this operation and the possibility for shape, we switch to polygon and here is option uh, DXF file. So let's select it. We find our place, plate, it's this one and we can open it. And now uh, it's uh, 
editor, let's say, for import the plate geometry. So we select one line, and we then we select consecutive, and uh, now it's there. There are some dimensions, and we can confirm. Of course, here are some roundings, so we can go to the plate editor and we can uh, delete these roundings. And uh, you can notice that this is our plate. It was uh, imported and of course it's possible you can use it. So I think I covered your question. Thank you very much, David. And I have another question. Um, um, from user, uh, and and it's uh, about the um, about uh, usage or implementation of the uh, and uh, plates or um, the uh, the hooks at the end of the anchors and about the transfer of the tension to the concrete. Okay, uh, let's talk about it, and I will show you the, uh, the possibilities in the application. Um, we implemented uh, three ways of and uh, uh, and uh, des design of the anchors. It, the anchors can be direct or straight, and and at in the end of the um, anchors can be washer plate, circular or rectangular. And uh, how it's how it will uh, work with the cold check? Well, uh, this um, definition at the end uh, of the anchor will affect the uh, the area of the concrete cone because it increases uh, the uh, the base of the concrete cone. Simply, the concrete cone become uh, larger. So this is the answer, and uh, we are running out of time. So we will. Uh, answer your question by email directly and I think we can we can say that we have maybe three or four questions to answer so let me just finish the presentation um, I want to ask you to fill a small survey after the webinar it will take you 30 seconds tops and it will help us to improve the webinars uh, to the future. A recording will be placed on our homepage and YouTube channel within three days. You can also ask for the trial version at our homepage. And don't forget, we have a brand new resource center. Uh, it's You can find it uh, in uh, our homepage, ideastatica.com, and uh, it's a brand new. We created a new resource center for version nine with updated tutorials, frequently asked questions for all our applications. We will place a, a recording of our webinar to our homepage too. And uh, that's the last thing. I want to thank you for your attention and I hope we will hear uh, each other soon. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you and have a nice day.